Hi there. Let's take a few minutes to review how the shade norm command works on your graphing calculator. So let's assume that we have a variable x. It is distributed, that's what the tilde means, normally with a mean of 7 and a standard deviation of 2.1. So notice we have the shape, we have the center, and we have the spread. The shape is normal. Here is the mean, that's the center, and here is the standard deviation, the spread. If I'm interested in finding the percentage of observations that are, for instance, between a lower and an upper boundary, between 4.5 and 11, it is most convenient to change those into z-scores, and then we can use our shade norm command. So I have already calculated the z-scores for 4.5. That z-score would be negative 1.19. And for 11, that z-score is 2.14. So now we are ready to go to the shade norm command in order to find the percentage of observations. So first of all, make sure that you have the correct window set. Your minimum should be at negative 3. Your max should be at 3 with a scale of 1. The y minimum should be negative 0.2. The maximum should be 0.4. And the scale should be 0.1. Very good. So to get to the shade norm command, you need to press the second button and then the variables button that takes you to all of the different distributions built into our calculator. I want to draw it so I'm going to press the right arrow. Shade norm should be the first option. Press enter. If you have a newer style calculator, a TI-84 style calculator, you will directly enter the lower and upper boundary. The lower one was the z-score of negative 1.19. Press the down arrow. Your upper boundary was 2.14. Then here the calculator asks for a mean or a standard deviation. The truth is we're using z-scores, so the mean is 0, the standard deviation is 1. Those are preset in the calculator. You don't need to change those, so you can arrow past those and highlight draw and press enter. The area under the curve, remember, represents the percentage of observations between that lower and upper boundary. So we have about 87%, 86.7% of observations between those two z-scores. Now, once you have run the shade norm command, it is important before you run it again to press second quit, go back to your home screen, and you need to clear the drawing. To do that, press the second button and then the program button. This will bring you to your draw options. Clear draw is the first option. Press enter to bring it to the home screen and press enter to execute the command. Oops, I executed it twice, that's okay. I'll clear the home screen. Very good. Let's try then another example, slightly different. So what percentage of observations would be above 10? So notice here, 10, be careful, is my lower boundary because I'm interested in observations that are above 10. So the z-score for 10, I have already calculated that. That z-score is 1.43. But I am interested in observations that have z-scores at 1.43 or above 1.43. So I also need an upper boundary. So using an upper boundary, a z-score of 10, is perfectly sufficient when using z-scores in order to get this area on your graphing calculator. So here's my lower boundary. Here's my upper boundary. Let's go put them in. So same thing. I've cleared my drawing. Second, variables, over to draw. I press enter. The lower boundary is 1.43 this time. The upper boundary is 10. I'll arrow past the mean and standard deviation, highlight draw. 
Very good. So here is where 10 would be at a z-score of 1.43, and I really am getting the area at 10 or above 10. That's about 7.6% of observations. So again, let's go back to the home screen. Let's clear the drawing. Second program button, press enter to bring it to the home screen. Press enter to execute the command. I'll clear my home screen. And we'll do one more example, the other case that could occur. So what if I'm interested in observations that are below 6? So I need my z-score for 6. I have already calculated that. That's negative 0.48. But notice I'm interested in observations that are no higher than 6, that are below 6. So understand, in this case, this is the upper boundary. Now I need to specify a lower boundary of, let's say, negative 10. So that's perfectly low enough for a z-score in order to capture the area under the curve. So if I'm interested in below 6, the z-score for 6 is going to end up being my upper boundary, and then I need to use a z-score of negative 10 for my lower boundary. Let's put that in. Again, second variables takes me to my distributions. I'll press the right arrow. Shade norm is right there. I'll press enter. My lower boundary now I must enter first. It's negative 10. The upper boundary is negative 0.48. I will highlight draw and press enter. So that area, that percentage of observations, is about 31.6%. So notice, below 6, or below a z-score of negative 0.48, here is where that z-score is negative 0.48, and the area that I'm getting is really below that z-score. So one last thing to consider, if you are using an older style calculator, and there's nothing wrong with that, you're not going to see the screen where you're asked to enter a lower boundary and an upper boundary and then highlight draw. Instead, what you will see, let me press second enter and bring back the last command that I put into the calculator. This is what you will see on the home screen. You will see the shade norm command, so you will still enter the lower and upper boundaries, but when you do that, you need to enter the lower boundary first. So here it is on the screen. You would enter that negative 10 first, as in the last example. Then you need to put a comma, and then after the comma, you put your upper boundary. Here is the negative 0.48, as in the last example, that was our upper boundary. It's extremely important that you separate the lower and upper boundary with a comma. Then, at this point, you can close the parentheses. You do not have to enter the 0, 1. Um, that is the mean and that is the standard deviation. You do not need to enter those. Those are automatically set in your calculator to 0 and 1. So after you enter the lower boundary, comma, the upper boundary, you can simply close your parentheses and press enter and you'll get exactly the same thing. So remember, after you do a shade norm command from the home screen, it's important that you press second program so that you go to the drawing options clear the drawing, bring the command to the home screen, and press enter. It's important that you clear the drawing so that you are ready to do your next shade norm command. Hope this has been helpful review.